Okay, hi everyone again. Continuing our season of design reviews, we are now looking at video and image processing and maybe sound, I don't know, we'll see. We're at video editing right now. Okay, so video replace is something that can replace a segment of a video now with another video, is that correct? That was the case before. Now you can specify a segment and replace it with a still image, just oh, as I a see, handy I see, utility. I see, I see. I see. So that so time is not changed. Correct. I'm a little bit confused. Before, if you have a video and the place you're replacing into is only five seconds long and you've got a one hour video, what happens? Uh, we had two fitting modes. One of them chopped the video, the other one stretched um, the interval. Okay, fine. So At clearly duration. with an image. This is always a stretch type thing. This is always just fitting that time duration, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, image take. So, so look there, Stephen, the, the whole set of image things now accept video objects. That, that that's whole nice. group below there. So what about something like chromaticity plot 3D? More things. No, that, that's not supported now. More things we're going to be coming back to in a second round, uh, considering whether we want to map the function over frames or do something more sensible over time, combining information from multiple frames. Well, I mean, like coming to plot stuff. 3D, I would imagine what it would do is just average it over the whole you know, movie. Right? Probably average it or get out all the pixel of all the frames, that would be, right? Yeah, 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 yeah right, exactly which again should do some dimension reduction before it plots all of that. But um, yeah, again, uh, these were the obvious ones that uh, we're just mapping over frames of the video. More of these things will be coming, should be coming in the future rounds. I mean, <clears throat> So things like, I mean, so if I say edge detect on a video, in the future, you imagine that that would just edge detect every frame. That wouldn't be wrong. Yes, I think that nice. would happen. Yep. Um, like remove background, could just remove every the background in every frame. Now, the, that would be one function that I would debate. Should we find the common background ac across all frames, or at least across frames of every scene, and then do remove Well, I background? agree. I think it would be a luxury feature to have it do something other than frame-wise. Right. Removing. And I mean, like image identify. Hmm. I mean, if it's a cat from many angles, it's still a cat. And you want a single cat come out or a list of all the entities that are identified at different frames. And should we do delete duplicates? See, these are all the obvious questions that on many yeah. of these, uh, I guess about 200 functions now, uh, we need to answer before we can make more of these except videos. Fair enough. Okay, Nat Encoder now does video, wonderful. Image dimensions. How does it know, I mean, what happens if I want the second video track? Uh, that's not acceptable unless, yeah, at least that's not available as an option in image dimensions. One could construct a video object with the second track being the only track or the that? first track by uh, video select video track selection option. So you can say video of the file name comma video track selection goes to two or okay. a list of two comma anything. It, we always take the first available track in the video object. Does scene change work in video frame list? Did we talk? We, we talked about this last time a bit. We did. Um, in an internal discussion, you suggested at changes 
for scene change, which is documented up there. We were internally discussing that ad changes um, might not be obviously uh, always immediate. Uh, so someone was recommending changes instead. I think typing changes would be easier as well. OK, so hold on. So you're saying frame specifications are, look, these do not make sense as parts of speech together. Uh, sorry, I didn't get Uniform it. and changes don't, don't go together. Oh, oh, OK. I mean, how does that work? Um, Oh, maybe it's okay with changes, I guess. What do you think, Roger? I think it's okay, changes. I, I, I think it's not, nobody's going to really misunderstand that. Look, you say that... uniform sampling, but you don't say changes sampling. No. I mean, it would be better if it was uniformly, randomly. Yeah, I was thinking that. That would be easy to change, and we could still easily support the synonyms. Yeah, I know, but hold on. <clears throat> Video frame list gives a list of N images. OK. You know, why isn't this? It would make more sense if this was something like um, video frame list, blah, comma, and then 56, something like arrow uniform. What about something like that? Where else do we have that? I'm not sure. Reminded me of the max features, max items that we have as well. Maybe we could utilize them if you don't like the proposed syntax. However, max items, max features make sense here, not as much in um, snippets video which is uh, having a very similar design to this. Well, the issue is, look, the other possibility would be to say something like this. And then the issue is the elided case of that. Because I can imagine also this case is somewhat useful. Or do we don't have a default for n? We don't have a default for n. We don't. So the case Except that we changes, imagine that chases, do we think changes could work? Yeah. Changes without an n could work. And that's documented in that table, too. Obviously, we need to use a default threshold for when we assume a change is a change. Mm -hmm. But other than that, yeah. But that's a separate option. What's that option? Um, oh, that I haven't documented. I think in this design that you see in the notebook, it's going to be a list of three values, changes, comma, n, comma, t. I, I think I've documented that in um, snippets video. Okay, but the default case of changes 
and no n. So we change this all and then the threshold. Mm -hmm. All right, I guess this is okay with lists. I'll just call it changes. Okay. Okay. Ethan is complaining that there are no corresponding loss functions for net encoder for videos. More on video and neural net is coming. A lot more, hopefully, is coming. But not in this version? No. Okay. Ethan is also asking about pose estimation. Do we have anything on that? Uh, no. Although, do we have any networks in the repository for that? I think we do, actually. Now that you say, I think uh, at least one, if not more net, in the repository. Given that we have face you know, facial features and things, we, we could have pose detect, could we not? I I don't know why not, sure. Actually, the obvious thing will be I'll, pose recognize. Pose recognize, perhaps. I'll have to look into neuro mo models as well and see what's out there. It does seem useful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Image fitting. What is that? What is? Actually, what can is... you open frame fitting? That was the one we introduced, I think, 12.2 or 12.3. And we are proposing a name change from frame fitting, which is, um, which would make sense in the video domain. But we actually need the same option in image domain. So what does it do? We're... Um, if you're this joining letterboxing, you know, the, all the black stuff around it, how is it going to fit it? Well, fit an image function? in an image. Right. But what's the function that you are, that it's, it's being put into? This is the one you're looking at is no, no. transcoding. And I, you're I, asking, I see that, but I, I'm asking for the image case. What function are you going to put it into? Um, conform images is one. And that had. Uh, I think in, I, I think this proposal is not for any specific image function yet, but um, when we are combining images, like in con conform images, again, has an argument for fitting. However, one could imagine having this image fitting as an option there. Okay, but what have we done elsewhere in image trim and image resize, all those things? What, what, isn't there something where you have to decide whether you tile Retile the image and so on. Uh, image image assemble has that too. Image is collage. That yeah. Image collage, image assemble. Okay, but there's a different one, which is something where you've got padding for the image, right? Yes. Right, and isn't isn't this, you know, fitting is a concept. It's not. I mean. Padding, isn't padding a concept that you also use for audio and stuff like this? Yes. Why isn't it documented here? Um, Probably should be, right? It's, it's, it is an it's available easy. option for audio. Yeah, although those illustrations doesn't say this is not for audio, but I agree it should be more explicit and maybe exemplified. Well, and also this thing here doesn't mention audio. And in fact, when it comes to video, we do need both frame padding as well as time padding. So we have debated a couple of times. There is no proposal for that, but um, I think some kind of an association setting that says temporal padding, frame padding mm -hmm. as two subparts of that would be useful. But padding is the analog of fitting, is it not? How uh, do you pad yeah, go ahead. Padding. padding is the scheme of padding. Um, fitting says how, how to how to fit. 
And then depending on how we fit, then we're going to have, we may or may not need any padding around the image. But things like image collage, don't they have a fitting idea concept as well? Yes. But that's uh, so far, all of those have been arguments, not options. Bring up the page, Stephen, because I think there's a useful table. For which page? Image, fit, image fitting. Uh, frame fitting. Oh, we didn't. OK. No, 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 no that's not. Let's look at the source. Because that, that doesn't have the illustrations. Let's. Okay. I think image fitting is an incomprehensible name. And it also is a fit of a different kind. You know what I'm saying? We've got a lot of fits. <laughs> and it's even got a fit, fit. So it's a fit, fit, you know. Yes. Right? Um. And it's been an argument in most other places, correct? Yes. And I mean, well, I could imagine such a thing for arrays as well. Why not? If you've got two arrays, this would be a useful thing to do. It's like a, to a pad block them or diagonal. resample them. Yep. Yeah, it's like a it's like a block diagonal matrix of some kind. Or you know something like that. Um, I mean, conform. You know, um, it's conforming to certain dimensions. Dimension conforming. Well, but it's not. It's. I mean. You know, conformation function might be a, an, a a possible thing, even though these aren't in fact functions. How crazy is that? I because mean, we can imagine something where you're given, in general, you're given the image and its uh, target bounding box. Mm-hmm. And then these just happen to be the names that you use for it for these cases. I mean, or it could be, I mean, just like we have um, for panel, is it panel? Yeah, I see. This is another can of worms related to this is this content padding business. Hmm. Is this related? I mean, the whole question of padding, which comes up a bunch in graphics and, you know, when you have to align graphics and so on, I. I kind of think we need a padding summit of some kind because I think there's a bunch of different things like this. I don't disagree. It could be discussed along with all of our spacings and framing and all of that as well, what to put in between. Yeah, well, right. But I mean, how much, how much plot range padding and all that, all those kinds of things. I mean, this is not padding. This is confirmation, this mm -hmm. business here. Correct. I'm favoring confirmation function. It's a bit pompous, but, but um, I think it says what it is. The only thing that comes to me is that if you look at image conform audio 
conform or con conform images it's the other way around conform audio um there are no more properties around. there are more properties than just uh, the size that can be conformed now do we want conformation function to conform like in in its more generic form of a function do we want it to conform anything possible well you could call it confirmation method if we wanted to simplify it a bit I, I think I like that better. And then mostly accept string settings in some cases. Yeah. If, OK. So I, I think that's more correct, yes. And then this would could go in here, confirmation method. And it isn't just a confirmation function being fed into form images. And then the confirmation method would be this would be what instead of that argument it could be it could also have the confirmation method would be one of these mm -hmm. all right although at that point it's really the method for conform images well i understand we should support this as an argument whether we bother to support that as an option i don't know okay but this is essentially a peel off option where it was supported as an argument for in this function, but when it is peeled off, it is an option. Yep. Okay. Image stitch. Okay. Uh, Ali is asking for image processing capabilities. So now we're talking about them. Okay. Image stitch. I do like all these illustrations that you guys are coming up with. It's really good. And we should, have you looked through in other groups, Roger, which other groups could do with illustrations? No, no we, we haven't really achieved scale yet for, for what to catch up with on our, on our own. And we're keeping it under sort of tight control to not slide too much in, in quality. Well, quite. I mean, these are not easy to make. No, they're not. Um, and and they require a close connection between the person who understands what's going on and the artist who's actually drawing them. And we spend a lot of time, I spend a lot of time reviewing all of these at this stage until, until we feel confident that we can. I, I think it's, I think it's, look, it's, it's, words are hard enough, pictures are even harder. Yeah. When they work though, the, the the speed to comprehension is quite fast, and that's what I. That no, I know I agree with you. I mean, you know, as you might notice, the NKS book is absolutely full of of uh, you know diagrammatic explanations of things. Absolutely, yes. Many of which took a while to figure out. Right, and um, we've had to iterate these quite a lot. Right. I think one of the things that's tricky in these pictures is that you are including, you know. One of the nice things about the NKS book pictures is that they are purely from the sand up, so to speak. They don't have anything representational in them. Whereas right. in these pictures, you have to have something representational, otherwise it's incomprehensible what's going on. Right. Okay, anyway, so image stitch. I see. So why is panorama different from scan because of the because of the, the some kind of angles? Yes. Why is it when it's at a distance? Why is it any? Am I being confused? Why is it any different when it's at a when the objects you're looking at are far enough away? Am I being stupid about that? Do you understand what I'm asking? Why is the what's the limiting is, case? Does it? Yeah, I agree with you. So it should have less of an effect when it's far away but 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 does it deal with things being nearby so do, it deals with i am totally confused here as you look around i am so confused as i if i'm at a fixed point and i turn my head i do not obviously do not get different parallax of the objects i'm looking at right 
guess. So I don't understand why there's a difference between these two cases. What, what is the different thing that you're doing in those different cases? I mean, that's magnificent. That's absolutely magnificent. Wow. Does it always work that well? We'll have to still stress test it. It's been in the in the builds a week, as of a week ago. But um, as you see, at least in those cases, it it really seems there are. If you scroll down, there are a list of steps that we go through to okay, but what's achieve happening this. Here? I don't understand what's happening here. And why is view center in quotes? Um, yeah, that's that's an internal option. That's that is to say which image should be taken to be the center of the image. And you're saying in this panorama thing, the borders, oh, I see it, it I see, I, I understand what's happening. I understand what's happening. These pictures are projected onto a sphere, and so there's a projection in general. Yes. And then so, the other by the case, way, you're... Mm -hmm. As soon as Jose gets, you know, the sphere as opposed to geo functionality working, right, you should be able to have sphere projection, our, arrow whatever here right so given those pictures you should be able to show you know a lambert as a musical projection of whatever city that is i'll look you know into it is that coming in 13. i don't remember i haven't seen much about it i mean the the point of sphere you know the idea is sphere distance as opposed to geo distance and the only difference is that geo distance is really referring to the planet on which we live where a sphere distance will be a sphere of radius one by default with um you know with angles and radians and things mm -hmm. geo distance seems so very specific but given that you know a hundred percent of our customers are either right now on the earth or in orbit around it i think we are that's the one we want to use um Does this run reasonably fast? Yeah. So we're going to have a um, progress indicator for it. It doesn't have it now. I, I think that one is going to run in about 10 seconds or so. That was pretty good. That was faster. But so I, how does it, it know to distort? So it understands that distortion up there. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty neat. So now, what happens if I want to cut out of this thing just the region where I've where I am a full rectangle? I don't want any of this winged nonsense here. There are there are very many different ways of uh, drawing a, a full rectangle in that, and we have to define which rectangle to pick: the one with largest aspect ratio, largest area. Uh, the one that gives most of the image as opposed to the other ones. Um, well, I would assume you always want most of the image. I mean, you want the... But then the most of the image might be the very th short thing on the top. I, I see. What you're saying is that there is a there is a rectangle. It just is long and thin. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Are there options for this? Um, not yet. I guess we are leaving this... Um, well, we might be implementing we might be able to implement something, but not within the next four days. Um, what is transformation class? That's to restrict whether you want only translations or rigid or other types like perspective. That was in version 10? Yep, that was when we introduced image align, I think. Okay. Okay, so so hold on. So this, um, yeah, iOS on live stream is saying that they didn't, even though these are beautiful pictures, they didn't understand that this is a spherical thing and that's a flat thing. And I agree that that is an imperfect aspect of those pictures at this time. And you could you could indicate this by drawing the kind of the the guide marks of a sphere around this and the that, guide marks a of point. a of a of a square grid around this one. Sure. And also not showing those edges as straight. Mm -hmm. 
Um, okay, so let's let's um, okay, let me understand this. So wait a minute. So you're saying so so there are various issues. So in terms of stitching the things together, I think I understand that. Now, what what is this view center thing? The view center thing, you can put any of those images on the center, say the I see. first one. So it's a question of which then... one is deformed and which one is not. Exactly. <sighs> OK. Which and that's, that's very not going to stay. the documented name view center. It, it needs yeah, to, as you it, see, that's a string uh, thing, not documented. In yeah, it's, but it's, it's the wrong name. No, but yeah. we actually have view center. Yeah, but it's a different, it's completely different. It's <laughs> something totally different. Yes. Um, So, okay. So the issues are, which which is the undeformed? I mean, that's very much related to this whole projection question. Because in general, you could take the whole thing you get. Okay, this is what's relevant in the case where there is a spherical, you know, where where the image is imagined to be on a sphere. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. As opposed to so, so the different cases are. No, it could be a planar one as well. And you mean the transformation class is only. No, no, I, no. I mean, okay. look, look, the things that I'm imagining is you've got a flatbed scannery type thing, and you've got a thing that is moving over this flatbed, right? That is one case. There's no projection involved there. Everything is just, you know, you might align it in a certain way, but there's no. There's no spherical projection stuff, right? Case Correct. number two is you're turning your head, and you have a single, you have a, a essentially a point light source, or in, in this case, a point camera that is turning around, Correct. and then is observing something which is spherically projected. I really think. I wonder if could we see if Jose might be available. Uh, yeah, I can try. Okay. Um, okay, so actually, Ethan is commenting about the confirmation thing. Um, changing, yeah, and changing encoding and things like that in confirmation of videos. How does that work? In addition to the size, the confirmation method of size. What about, I don't know, color? I mean, aren't they, you know, like like all those things you see at the end of movies, you know, the, the different color models and things? Mm -hmm. Right? Isn't there, in what way are you conforming videos with respect to encoding color models, frame rate, et cetera? Things like that are controlled in video transcode. Uh, some of those options are available to our video generators, not all of them. We decided we'll leave them mostly for video transcode. But, so in um, other words, the confirmation the question, method. Mm -hmm. The issue is, is the name confirmation really the right name, given that it is the purely the size story? I, I think we could go beyond just the size. Um, again, with some kind of an association syntax, we can have multiple properties specified. And if yes. it's just a string, it could be the size. Or just a list, in fact, it could be a size. OK. OK, fine. All right, so that's a future enhancement for that. But otherwise, it's it's some. Um, uh, Uh, transcode, okay. Um, yeah, Sandra is commenting on, on this name, View Center, which is right now crazy, is something like Center Image or something. But, but apparently Jose is away today. But I mean, the issue is we have exactly the same issue for projections of the Earth, right? How are you going to center the projection? You see what I'm saying? Yes. Right. Um, and if I look at geo projection, I think geo projection kind of hacks it in the sense that it says, given a p 
particular projection, don't you just say, um, look at the options then probably. Yeah, by the way, we should, different comment, but we should probably have documentation for each. We should have a, a documentation sub pages for each of the, uh, each of the um, uh, projection types. Yeah. Uh, uh, actually, we really uh, should. No, no, I, I, we, we've been talking about that. We want to bring out mappings, okay, transformations. And these are nonlinear transformations. And it's a big collection. Right. I mean, in this particular case, the way you center one of these is just by giving a list pair, as I recall. Right. Like if I'm saying I want, you know, a conic equidistant projection, where does it even say how this works? Oh, centering. Here we go. Oh, boy. So there's a centering option. What is all this is this is what I'm afraid of, right? This is what I'm afraid of here. Is there are many other different kinds of details here. The central scale factor. Do you get what I'm saying? It is more complicated, I believe. Yep. Um okay. So that, that view center is not going to be an exposed option here. I agree we should look at what you just opened and talk to Jose. Um, what we are doing now by default is that we put the image which has strongest connection to other images in the center. Fine. I, I, you know, this is what for this version, we should just do the obvious thing. Sure. I mean, I think. Um, uh, Oh boy, that's a complicated issue as well. I mean, that's, you see, this is again, a confirmation method type question is how to conform the color, you know, the color levels and so on. Yes. I mean, like, like if you have an overlap and one of them is slightly redder than the other, what do you do? Yeah, there are a couple of things that happen there. There are brightness equalization, there is uh, color balancing, co color equalization, and there is blending at the edges. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. And, By the way, th this, I mean, previously we had image align, right? Which was a, yes. which was a kind of a way to do a piece of this. Is that correct? Um, yeah, a piece of this, if we wanted to do stitching, but also image align on its own, has use in um, aligning images before, say, 3D reconstruction or doing things like focus stacking. Um, what is this doing? Thing? Yeah. What is this doing? Or this thing of where we enhance the light sense. No, no, I don't understand. What is this doing here? Yeah. Click on the output. It finds, oh. it places the second image where it matches the first image. I see. I see. Okay. So it's a small piece of image stitching. Yep. That is a very obscure first output. Yeah. I've, I've looked at this page multiple times and I know I've not noticed this. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you deal but, with that. Well, maybe but, just. But a you're picture. right. No, I think we can, especially now that we have image stitch, I guess we have been adding image stitch examples here as well with that focus. But I think we should make this more of an, uh, more of a real, really alignment between images that need to be aligned, not for stitching purposes. Yeah. By the way, if this was a smaller piece of this image, it would be more obvious what's going on. Mm, you're right. You're right. Or maybe oh. some kind of a superimpose with a proper border around the other one. Yeah, why not? Yep. This one has a border, and that one doesn't have a border, and then it does the right thing. And yes. it slices the border off, and it, it'll be obvious what's going on. That's a very unobvious example. Yep, I agree. Oh, gosh, this is another projection. Isn't it? Yeah, it's scan. No, I know, but but it's not rectilinear, is it? No, it's not. It, it's got a. How does it know that those things are tipped over? 
it doesn't need to. It's how the image is captured, right? It's like yep. a, it's like a drone. It's like a plane. No, I realize that. I realize, like that. I realize that. I'm I'm asking the question. Maybe it's just me being this image here. Is that precisely this here without tipping? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. But then these ones are tipped because of the way the sides work. Correct. Boy, okay. This is subtle. It's lovely. I mean, it's really lovely the way that it deals with these, these you know, projection things. Okay, well, that's the beginning of a, of a long descent. I mean, it really should be sphere projection, I would imagine. That option that'll be the same as the one for the all the sphere capabilities there. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, Ethan is saying multiple times here, making sure switch stitch works for full spheres. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you need a spherical projection in that case, don't you? I mean, in other words, if you have a, I'm very confused here. So, so then, okay, so then the question is, can you make it work with dynamic image? There are a couple of requests here, basically. Um, image stitch, we discussed it with Marcus multiple times. The output is going to be a single image and no other modes. Now, do we want to have things like spherical image stitch or cylindrical image stitch uh, in, in which I guess we could return other things or maybe an image plus coordinates that gets mapped to a cylinder or a sphere? Because there are addi obviously additional things that are going to be needed to say how in the cylindrical stitching, the first okay, so and last let's connect. walk through the multiple things which are involved here. Okay, so you got an image, and in principle, you could texture map it onto a sphere. Right. Then you could be looking at different parts of the sphere. You would do the same thing as geographics. We'd have a sphere graphics, which I think we're planning to have anyway. And sphere graphics would give you all of the same kinds of projection capabilities that geographics has. Does that make sense? And one could even imagine a dynamic sphere graphics, which would do exactly the right thing and allow you to essentially, I mean, although the controller might want to be different from the controller for geographics, I'm not sure, because you're typically in a, you know, in the earth, we are small compared to the earth, right? So we tend to move around. In dynamic geographics, we just want to pan and zoom around small pieces of the earth, typically. Hold right. on. Do you, so you wanted a planar projection like we do in geographics you didn't want a 3d interface where you're looking around well i mean by the time we have vr and so on we'll want a 3d interface but this is the same issue as astrographics right because it's it's inside the sphere as opposed to the earth where you're looking at it from the outside mm -hmm. right so it seems to me that there are different what one wants is essentially a representation of the spherical texture, which we don't specifically have for the Earth. We represent that, you know, our maps are implicitly correspond to what's on the surface of the Earth. But we don't have something where we just give it a symbolic blob of data. I mean, you know, look, the concept would be spherical image, presumably. And what is that, do you think? Like a I think it's the, I think it's the view of the sky. It's, it is the... Um, the 3D interface or the flat thing? No, I think it's a symbolic object. Okay? Spherical image would be a symbolic object, which is like the sky. You know, assume that the sky was a... You know, assume you're in a fake universe or something, and the sky is painted, and you're looking from the inside. That's right. what I imagine spherical image would be. But then you can navigate around that like we do. Exactly. With 3D. Exactly. Okay, so that's just 3D. Okay, fine. Right. So, yeah, so what I'm suggesting is that spherical image would be. So, I mean, you know, spherical image would then just be whatever data it needs to represent the 360, you know, version of one of these images, possibly with incomplete parts. And then what it outputs by default, presumably like geographics, would be some projection of the spherical image. 
See what I'm yep. saying? Okay, so there's a second stage there. Well, well, why would it? I'll say this. So you wouldn't get a 3D interface. You would get a flat interface. I think the default output should be flat, just like the default output for geographics is not dynamic geographics. Well, dynamic geographics is still flat. I know it's still flat. And the question of what the controller is, look, spherical image is a great segue to VR, basically, because that's what you want in VR, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Right. So in other words, what we could imagine is, were there to be a reasonable VR format, which I'm not sure there is, mm, it's only this, there better be one of these days. I mean, it's completely uh -huh. crazy that they don't, that it hasn't existed, that it's been like put objects into a unity scene or something to make VR. It's crazy that there isn't a bitmap VR. There must be a bitmap VR standard is, by now. What is, is it? So Apple, it's one of the file formats we see that Apple is supporting. I forget what it's called now. Okay, fine. Which is but then, yeah, right. So, th the, so that's what we then need. And then spherical image should be exportable in that format, whatever it is. And then you're, you know, and, and obviously once, once one can routinely hook up a VR thing to one's computer, then, you know, who knows what we're doing then with notebooks and, and images within notebooks of this type. But um, uh, yeah, Sandra is commenting about turning spherical photos into planet projection photos. The difficulty with that is, I think it's and this is why I wanted Jose here. I, I'm I'm always confused by this. Astrographics and geographics are not the same. One you're looking from outside the planet, and the other one you're looking out at the sky. And I think right. the spherical image case is the case of most interest is out at the sky. Because the only case in which, well, there is the other case. Okay, the other case is kind of the Teo-like photography case where you're looking all around an object. Yeah, this is complicated. This is complicated. There are really two cases. There's, I'm looking all around an object. I have a drone photographing or a 3D scanner photographing all around an object from outside in. And the other mm -hmm. one is, I'm looking around my scene from inside to out. And I think those are two different cases. See what I'm saying? And I think they yeah. require different controllers. I mean, one of them, you could imagine a controller that is like, you know, a trackball or something where you are moving around on the thing. We did one on a texture. There's a thing called a skybox where we simulate that thing. We're sitting in a box and you're looking outside. It's like a glass box. Okay. Okay. However, I really think if you're scanning from outside and you always stay at the, you, you view at a perpendicular angle, the reconstruction of the two are going to be, is going to be the same. I don't know. I still also have to wrap my mind around it, but I think really the, the reconstruction is going to be the same for both. I think the controls will be different. I think, I think it's interesting will... to think about sort of the workflows here. The, the controllers the are, I agree. But the reconstruction, I think, is going to be the same. And yes, Roger. Because I think what's going to happen absolutely. is, for example, given a 3D surface, you're going to want to generate a spherical image of the 3D surface. That would be an example. Because that's the interface that you would use to put it into VR, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But VR is just that. You're sort of navigating around from the inside. That's uh -huh. correct. Except that, but we also um, have this sort of this specimen. You know, our three D graphics is more like specimen. You you you're rotating around a little specimen, right? But the point is, the point is, you are moving. You you are walking around the specimen, right? Yeah. As opposed to you are in one place and you are turning your head. Exactly. And in VR, what you get to do with a VR headset is you are in fundamentally one place in a first approximation, and you're turning your head. Right. Right. And with the cameras that we added in version. And six, we can do either actually with our 3D graphics. The camera we had prior to version six, you had to be outside and look in. Right. Um, the comments from our live stream here about um, let's see, one comment from Owen. I think this is about exporting and knowing encodings and things like that. 
has to look at what encoding it is every time they export an image, a video. I don't completely understand. In other words, what encoding did we end up using? I'm not sure why one cares. Um, let's see. Uh, Luis is asking, is it possible to mathematically change the pixel values and get back an image? Yes, use image data and then image on the image data. That is very easy. Um, okay, how would this work for stereoscopic dot MPOs? 3D asks. What is the story? What are MPOs? That's a file format, presumably. Dot MPO, have we heard of it? Uh, no. What is the story with story? So, so this particular thing of image stitching, oh boy, that's another weird case, is stereoscopic images and image stitching. Yep. Not yet handled, I think. Weird. I mean, stereoscopic has gone in and out of favor ever since the 1880s. I think I the first... The first boom was in 1880 or so. Yeah, and there was uh, another one in the 1980s. Yes. Um, and maybe, I don't know. It's, it's hard to, to, to say who. Look, basically, the basic point is, as soon as there is a serious VR, AR headset that is, has the form factor of a pair of glasses as the form fa instead of the form factor of a helmet, yeah. you know, things will change. It will. It will, yeah. And I'm and not that sure anyways. Happen. Yeah, I completely agree. But how much it, it is related to image stitch, I don't know. I think we do want to create stereo, stereo, stereoscopic versions of images when we have lefts and rights uh, that could be easily viewable with those gadgets. But that's a different thing from stitching them together. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. The stitch, I, I'm just trying to understand the future, given what the nice thing you're showing here. Yep. Right? I mean, you know, the future is presumably a spherical image. Perhaps the outside in and inside out variants, I don't yet understand that. And then a whole variety of ways to view those things and ways to project those things. Yes. And, and my feeling is that rather than feeding, I mean, perhaps the projection capabilities of spherical image could be fed into directly into image stitch, but I would not think about those as part of image stitch. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I would think about them as part of spherical image projection. And then, you know, again, things like how the centering works and all that kind of thing. So the only issue is you have some additional information from in stitching because you know what images you started with. But you know, whereas the coordinate system, right? If, if you're going to specify the center and you've got 10 images and they stitch together, and now you want to say, I want to center my spherical image here, how do you specify the here? Right, because you don't even have a coordinate system. You don't even have a pixel coordinate system to specify the here. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing now with this little bit hacky thing, I think, is to specify you want to be what you'd want to do is something more like inset. We want to say, I want to be at this pixel position in this frame, in this image, right? In other words, you can give a coordinate system. You have, I mean, it's actually kind of funny. These are coordinate charts in the sense of, you know, whatever, differential geometry, whatever, whatever your favorite, right? These are, the, what, what you have is a collection of the, the pixel positions within each stitched image, each stitch input image, right? Each, each image being stitched is a coordinate chart, defines a coordinate chart. Mm -hmm. Yes, pretty much. Right. And so if you say in this chart, this pixel position, then you have defined a position in the final image, right? So yes. to be able to say the center of the final image, were you to want to say that, you would give that as a chart number and a pixel position within that chart. Yes, that would work. 
So I wonder if we have an option that we could use, given that you seem to have these capabilities, within Image Stitch that is some kind of image center type thing. I mean, that would probably be the name, right? Image center arrow, but it's a little weird that you'd be giving uh, see, but, but actually what you want is just like inset. What you want to be able to do is say, yeah, here's, here's what you want. Here's what you want. You want to be able to say, and it's more like a key point mapping-y type thing. You want to be able to say, this position in, these co in this coordinate chart goes to this position in the final target space in the single chart, which is the final target. Potentially, you might want two different places in the, you know, in the original charts to map to two specified places in the final single chart output. Does that make sense? Clearly, there are many degrees of freedom. Followed. What's that? Yeah. Okay, let me I explain. Almost followed. Let me explain. This is not difficult. Okay. So imagine that I have that's one position there. Okay. That's a pixel position, you know, a chart to pixel position, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this here is chart, whatever that is, eight, pixel position, blah, blah, right? Yep. Okay. For each of those things, I could want to say, in my final image, these are the pixel positions that I want those things to land up at. Mm -hmm. Because my final image has more degrees of freedom than just saying where this one wants to end up. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yes. <clears throat> Okay, well, that's interesting stuff. All right. Ethan sends us examples of spherical videos. GoPro has a spherical option, I guess. Um, Sander has already made three, 360 VR videos with Wolfram Language and sends us a link. That is cool. Um, ah, that's interesting. Okay. And Sander says there's a community post here, which. Um, in which Sander has managed to, oh, lovely, oh, okay. Much to understand here. Hmm. Interesting, okay, cool. Um, okay. Uh, Owen is saying not encoding but file names. I think you have to be more explicit because I don't understand. Um, Enk is talking about NASA heel picks is a convenient way to pixelate a spherical surface. Okay, that's interesting. Um, uh, let's see. Wow, what is this? Oh, wow, look at this. Do you know about this? I have seen this before. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen this thing before. This is this is this is important to the satellite imagery folk. Are you aware of this stuff, Shadi? I I haven't looked into this before, but I can comprehend what that is. Yes. Okay. Because I mean, obviously, if you if you have equal area and lat long, yep, it's it's unfair to the poles. Yep. Um, on the other hand, if you're solving the Kelvin problem of equidistributing charges on a sphere, that's also too difficult. So mm -hmm. I imagine this is some compromise there. Ethan is commenting, the main non-VR use case for virtual interactive walkthroughs is real estate websites. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the two cases that I'm aware of are that and product, you know, the, the right? So there again, they're outside in and inside out cases, right? I mean, I have to admit, I've only seen these in, in demos from from tech companies, but I haven't seen them in the wild. But I imagine when you buy a pair of shoes that you get to see all around it with some kind of, um, uh, I have to admit, I don't know, I'm too, too pathetic in terms of that kind of uh, online shopping. But um, 
I, I would imagine that there's a way to use what is effectively a ball type controller to be able to look around an object again from outside in. Yes. And with the, and with the real estate stuff, that's all inside out type stuff, traditional VR. I mean, you don't usually, you know, you could have a thing which is the drone flying around your prospective house or office building or something, which would be, again, more like a, a shoe-like view, so to speak. But I don't think that's the primary case. Um, okay, well, so, so for this function right now, I see. So you've got various method option cases. Uh, right, right. So those are very basic options there. Yep. Um, so in this case here, you're giving a hint basically about what the arrangement of the images is. Is that correct? Correct. So what about the following possibility? What about the possibility of giving like a sparse array like format? Where, because, you know, you might have, for example, you've had a drone go around, you know, either a drone or you have some kind of control system thingy that's, you know, it's a microscope, it's moving around and it, it knows where it is, so to speak. And you might end up with something which says coordinate arrow image. Yeah, I think that's going to be more useful than the um, sparse array case. I think if we can have uh, possibly either a list of rules with positions goes to image or um, or well, an association. Not? Yeah, why yeah, not? That, that would be more useful. I think that the, the, the other case of sparse array you said, we probably have most of the images and some missing, so we could easily support missing in the array. Anyway, sparse, sparse array as well should be supported. But, yeah. um, but some kind of a coordinate rule uh, oh, image yeah, so would be useful. There's two different points, yes. the missing thing or the none would be useful in the image array. And the, um, sorry, and a sparse array version of that and rules of the form coordinate goes to image. Yes. And in general, what you'd want is that same kind of inset specification because in, in, in a perfect world, you would know the coordinates and you would say where in the image, where in the, in the chart coordinate system does that lie, so to speak. Yeah, but for the coordinate, for the list of rules with coordinates, we'll have to have the anchor point of the individual images too. That's the point you were making earlier. Yes, so, right. that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that, that what you would do is you would say, you'd have to say, I think, well, okay, so the natural thing would be something like, um, you know, X, Y goes to image. The problem is, where's the anchor point in the image? Mm -hmm. Do we have a way of specifying a point of interest in an image? Don't we have a way of specifying in the image a POI? No. The one thing we have recently done in video overlay is to use the wrapper placed. And we do say That's where to place idea. the image. And as a third argument, specify right. the so anchor that's, a, point. that's another thing to look at. We are, we are way over time here. Um, we have a question from Marco uh, about uniformizing colors. Isn't that one of these options here? I mean, in other words, if you, if you want to get rid of that square artifact there, what do you do? Well, I mean, that's a, that's a land of machine learning and other kinds of ways to blend images, I would imagine. Yes. Which... We have some version of, but we probably still need to work on. Mm -hmm. This is a great function. Um, all right, we still got more stuff to go over here, I'm afraid. How much more is there? Um, well, well, if we want to return to video, uh, so the stuff that remains is not that much, but if we want to return to video, uh, Okay, 3D, by the way, on our live stream is talking about MPO is multi-picture object format. I see. I'll look into it. Oh, look at this. This has a, it has two JPEGs side by side with certain parameters. 
like multi-angle disparity, something or other stuff. So it's got metadata. It's got EXIF-like metadata, I imagine. Um, okay. Uh, great. We've got another, I think we have another hour of this stuff. What do you think, Roger? I think so too. Okay. And then another hour of graphics tour video. Yes, if we're going to make graphics tour video, it, it's I I think graphics tour video is is hanging by a thread at this point, and I would suggest that graphics tour video for this version be some kind of function repository prototype. You're very silent. Okay. I mean, okay. <laughs> it'd be great if we can get it. I just think that there's a lot of degrees of freedom. Basically, you are describing a path in a graphic. That is a complicated thing in its own right. You've then got all kinds of random junk of, you know, we're going to have to talk about Frenet frames and the relationship to angle path 3D and all kinds of stuff. It's going to be complicated. Right? Because that, that, is, that is a version of what we're now talking about with spherical image and so on. No, that, no, no, no. It's 2D. It's 2D. I, I, it's, 2D. it's a it, okay. For now, it's a 2D walkthrough. Yeah, the, the 3D is significantly more. Okay, so there's no frenets there. No. So I mean, it's a 2D turtle, not a flying turtle. <laughs> yeah. Um. It's still going to be complicated because it's going to have it's going to have velocities and things like this going around the curve. Well, all that stuff. I mean, what I Yes. I mean, for us to to review this, we need to sort of have rich of richness of examples because one no. can make these projects and functions arbitrarily complicated. No, I know. I know. But I mean, but take this not, image. That's I mean, not the goal. What, what you know? do you want to do? If you, if you, you know, people do this routinely, you know, to make their, you know, kind of flat, you know, image presentations more exciting as they kind of wiggle around in these images, right? And there's right. a, you know, there's a... Uh, so we've done this ourselves for um, trade shows, which in case our graphics department have done some of these things. Right. Well, we should uh, figure out what they've done and what paths they used. Exactly. We should ask them. I mean, I'm sure that's just code. I mean, we did long ago, it must have been 15 years ago, we did that actually very nice. Actually, that's a good example. The, um, the, the graphics tour of the demonstrations. We should look at that video because that one was, was, I mean, that was all programmatically done and it was fairly well thought out. Because mm -hmm. what it did was, in that particular case, what it did was it went across this giant array of demonstrations and then it zoomed in on one of them it held for a while, zoomed out, went to another one, and so on. Right. But that's why I'm saying we need sort of use uses and show. So, so there are a couple of examples. Yeah. I mean, I think that that case where you are zooming in on a particular feature like, is a not uncommon case. Exactly. That's what we I'll, had in I'll mind. Create, I'll, I'll create a few examples for next time. Right. Let's at least spend, I but, don't know, 10, I, 15 I, minutes I, I, on it. Yeah. But I also tend to agree with Stephen that I don't think it's fully baked in the sense that unless we really use it ourselves, it's not going to be that great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, by the way, just a comment for the project management folk here. It really will be useful to make sure that there is a folder in which to put these things and to know what that folder is. Yeah, Archie, you could um yeah video i can take it from there for now i i know that but that's not the useful i mean that's not where we want it i mean and probably what we should do is to actually pre-create a bunch of folders in here which are for our top level guide page categories and worst cases we can use those okay oh look at this just made video graphics tour yesterday says sander Why is it wiggling around so much? Because it's bouncing to keep something constant. 
sounds like you're following that ray or something. It's yes. it's almost like the camera is on the ray, you know. Yeah, right. There's also seasickness this year. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. It's great though. It's yeah, it's cool. a really nice picture in the video. Very nice. Very interesting too. Uh, um right. Okay. Great stuff. All right. Until the next time. Thank you all. And um thanks um to folks on live stream.